What's going on guys, Jackson here, and this is the best computer for under $800. Now the main goal about this computer is I wanted to make it user friendly and powerful. Uh, I really wanted to make this a really good, good editing computer and it can also play some games. So to kick this build off, the CPU I chose is the FX350 4 GHz AMD Black Boxed Edition Core processor with a thousand words and characters in there. Long name aside, uh, it's 180 bucks. It gets you pretty much everything you need. Four gigahertz is like the best processor AMD has, like actually reasonably priced. I think the next one is like the 9300, something like that. It's like five gigahertz and it's like $800. Uh, yeah, I won't be getting that one. For the case, we have the Carbite Series 200R Mid Tower ATX. Coming in at 55 bucks, this is actually a really good case. Uh, I've read some reviews and overall, it's just pretty good job for this build. For the CPU cooler, I went with the Hyper 212 EVO Universal CPU Cooler. 30 bucks, uh, it doesn't really support overclocking that well, but it's better than the stock Intel or AMD cooler you get. So it does the job. And for the graphics card, we're going to be using an Nvidia GeForce GTX 650 Ti Boost 2 gigabytes. Uh, this was uh, actually pretty well debated on my part. Um, it's about $165, which is a pretty fair price for the system, but this one is actually not the best one out there because most people around this build will use something that's like $250. But remember, I wanted to put some of that towards the CPU and just kind of spread the money out instead of all putting it on the graphics card, which is what usually gaming systems are based to do. Up next for the hard drive, we're going to be using a Western Digital Green one terabyte Intel Power. Coming in at $60, this is just a no-brainer. Uh, $60 gets you a one terabyte hard drive. Um, I'm not gonna put an SSD in here. It's just too expensive for this build. Um, if you already have a hard drive, go ahead and swap that out, throw an SSD in there. You can probably get like a maybe, I know probably about maybe 64 gigabytes SSD for about $60. Probably if you look hard enough, you can find one, maybe a little bit more. But yeah, good price, works for this build. And now for the power supply, I wanted to make sure we had enough power for the build. So on this one, I went with a CM Series CX600M Power Watts modular power supply. And this power supply is modular, which is great. I don't know what it means, but everyone says you gotta get a modular, so I did. Coming in at $68, this is a great product for the build. Now for the motherboard, I wanted something that supported SLI and it supported Crossfire. So that's why I chose the 970A G4 AM3 Plus ATX AMD motherboard. It took me like four tries to get that take and I still didn't do it perfect. But this motherboard is about 40 bucks. It gets a job done, SLI and Crossfire. Uh, great gaming, just overall great gaming motherboard and it'll get the job done. Now for the RAM, I used Corsair XMS3 8 gigabyte two, four things. Coming in at 65 bucks. Now a lot of people will ask why I don't use the Vengeance. And Vengeance is a little bit more expensive. It's about $74, um, say about $9 there. And I've used this motherboard or this RAM before and it's just great. It works, everything's fine. I don't see any difference between the Vengeance and it's saying $9. It's a win-win. So there you have it. There is my computer that I would love to build, but I don't have the money for it. So I'm not gonna actually do a build it but I wish I could. Total price is about $802. Now, if you want a OS, you can either get Windows 7 or Windows 8. I prefer Windows 7 right now because all the programs I use are not compatible with Windows 8 right now. But let me know what you guys think of this system. If you think I missed something, tell me in the comments. You can yell at me all you want. Uh, be sure to follow me on Twitter. Links in the description. And I'll see you guys next time. This is Jackson. See you guys later. <laughs>